Hi everyone, and welcome to the third video in the King Hezekiah series, here on Gospel and Spade. If you have not watched the previous two videos which I have made, which will be linked above, then I encourage you to do so. In this episode, we will be dealing with the history and archaeology of the Assyrian invasion of Judah in 701 BC. This incident in biblical history can be found recorded in 2 Kings chapter 18 and chapter 19, 2 Chronicles chapter 32 and Isaiah chapter 36 and 37, which I do encourage you to read and check up for yourself. So sit back and I hope you enjoy. After having subdued the rebellious king of Babylon, Merodach Baladan, to the south of Assyria, Sennacherib, the son of Sargon II, was able to launch his campaign against the rebellious states in the western portion of his empire. This would include the kingdom of Judah and its king Hezekiah. As Sennacherib's army marched southward from Assyria, he first subdued the lands of Phoenicia and Philistia. According to Sennacherib's records of this campaign, that can be found in sources like the Taylor Prism, he recaptured the Philistine city of Ekron and executed the local ringleaders of the revolt. It also seems that Hezekiah at this point, possibly reconsidering his actions in rebelling against Assyria and hoping that a friendly gesture would appease the Assyrians, decided to set free the king of Ekron, Padai, and let him return to Ekron, where he was reinstalled as its vassal king by Sennacherib. However, this gesture by Hezekiah, which the Bible does not record, did not have its desired effect, and Sennacherib continued his assault against Judah anyway. Before Sennacherib could lay siege to Jerusalem and King Hezekiah, he set about destroying the fortified cities of Judah that helped protect Judah's capital from assault. His army therefore set about destroying the large and small settlements of Judah and pillaging the lands of its goods. The Taylor Prism states that the Assyrians laid siege to and conquered 46 cities and many villages within Judah. The Ezekiel inscription also mentions Sennacherib's siege of the city of Ezekiel in Judah. From this general destruction, the Assyrians claim to have taken over 200,000 Jewish captives from Judah, along with much cattle, including horses, mules, donkeys, camels and sheep, and other war booty besides. The devastation of Judah is also found recorded on the Nineveh slab in the British Museum, which would have originally been located under a Lamassu statue. Sennacherib declares on this slab that he laid waste to Judah. One of the most important fortified cities that Sennacherib took by siege was the city of Lachish to the southwest of Jerusalem in Judah. He was apparently so proud of this achievement that when he returned to Nineveh, he commissioned a large decorative relief which measures around 19 metres long that was displayed in his palace at Nineveh and which depicted the capture of Lachish. It is now displayed at the British Museum in its own room. The relief, which would have originally been brightly painted, was intended to both impress and intimidate visitors who came to the palace. The relief shows Sennacherib, who is seated on a throne with his attendants, observing the conquest and destruction of the city, along with the brutal punishment of its leaders, by means of being flayed alive, impaled, and beheaded. It depicts the deportation of its surviving Jewish inhabitants as well, including men, women and children who are being transported on carts and on foot. The massacre of certain Jewish inhabitants of Lachish, presumably the city's leaders and their families, by the Assyrians was confirmed when a large mass burial pit was discovered at the site of Lachish in Israel. This burial included the remains of hundreds of men, women and children that dates to the time of the destruction of the city by Assyria. The relief also clearly depicts the siege methods that the Assyrians used in siege warfare. 
These included the use of siege ramps to reach the walls and mobile battering rams to knock down the walls of the city. On the relief, the defenders of the city are attempting to destroy the battering ram by throwing firebrands and rocks upon them. The siege ramp shown on the relief that ascended to the gatehouse of the city was also discovered during excavations at the site of Lachish, at exactly the same location which is depicted on the relief. The relief therefore is a very accurate depiction of the siege and the ancient city. During excavations at Lachish, many large slingshot stones and Assyrian arrowheads were also discovered. The relief clearly depicts the use of slingers and archers by the Assyrian army. Assyrian cavalry can also be found on the relief. Sennacherib's siege of Lachish is mentioned briefly in 2 Chronicles chapter 32 verse 9. It was while Sennacherib laid siege to the city that Hezekiah, who obviously was having doubts and regretted his decision to rebel against Assyria, gave Sennacherib a large gift in an attempt to persuade him to stop his invasion and leave Judah. A Lamassu inscription at the British Museum records that Sennacherib took this gift from Hezekiah, but continued his campaign against Judah anyway, which is exactly what the Bible records in 2 Kings chapter 18 verses 13 to 16. It is also possible that at this time, Padai of Ekron was also released by Hezekiah, though it is unclear. As Sennacherib laid siege to the outer cities of Judah, the noose around Hezekiah and Jerusalem tightened. This was made worse by Sennacherib sending messengers and an advanced army to Jerusalem to intimidate and threaten Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The Assyrians in 2 Kings chapter 18 verse 21 told Hezekiah and the Jews of Jerusalem that if they fought to trust in their ally Egypt for help, that it would ultimately fail them. This proved to be true, as even though 2 Kings chapter 19 verse 9 and Isaiah chapter 37 verse 9 states that Terhaka came out with an army from Egypt, presumably to support their ally in Judah, that the Egyptian offensive was unsuccessful and did not stop the Assyrians. Terhaka, who is also called Terharka, would become a king of the Kushite 25th dynasty of Egypt. He was actually co-regent in 701 BC when the invasion took place and he is well attested to in both the historical and archaeological records outside of the Bible. This failed counter-offensive by Egypt is mentioned in Assyrian records, though it appears to have forced the Assyrians to redeploy forces from near Jerusalem to help counter this threat. With Jerusalem becoming increasingly surrounded by Sennacherib's army, and Judah's ally Egypt having failed to rescue them from Assyria, Hezekiah and Judah's options increasingly diminished. However, the Bible records that the prophet Isaiah encouraged Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to trust in God to deliver them, even in the midst of this national disaster. In relation to Isaiah, a small damaged seal was found in the Ophel region of Jerusalem in 2018. The middle of the seal contains the Hebrew name Isaiah, and the bottom of the seal, which is damaged, has been suggested by some to contain the Hebrew word prophet. Seeing that the seal was found in the same archaeological context and close to the famous Hezekiah seal, along with other seals of officials from Judah, it's thought by many that this seal belonged to the biblical prophet Isaiah, who appears to have been the official court prophet of King Hezekiah. The Assyrians tried to counter this sort of godly encouragement by stating in a letter that was sent to Hezekiah that they had captured and taken away the gods of other lands and that they would do the same thing to the Jews too which threat is recorded in 2 Kings chapter 19 verses 10 to 30. 
The practice of capturing the images of different gods of different nations by the Assyrians and taking them as prisoners to Assyria is clearly represented on Assyrian reliefs. In spite of Hezekiah's unwise rebellion against Assyria and dependence on Egypt for help, the Lord intervened when Hezekiah sought the Lord. The Bible records that God encouraged the king through the prophet Isaiah in 2 Kings chapter 19 verses 32 to 34 with the fact that the Assyrians would not lay siege to or enter Jerusalem like they had done to the other cities of Judah like Lachish and Azekah. Isaiah also stated that God himself would stop the Assyrians and would force Sennacherib to leave Judah before his campaign against Jerusalem and Hezekiah was complete. The Bible records that God intervened by sending an angel of the Lord, which destroyed a large portion of Sennacherib's army, which forced the king of Assyria to suddenly end his campaign and head back home, without having captured either Hezekiah or Jerusalem. It is of particular note that in the Assyrian sources like the Taylor Prism, Sennacherib records that when he had Hezekiah trapped like a bird in a cage, he simply stopped the campaign and went home with no explanation for the sudden change when he was on the cusp of total victory in Judah. Sennacherib never claims to have taken either Hezekiah or Jerusalem, but simply that he had surrounded both. This silence is very unusual and strongly implies that something had gone very wrong towards the end of the campaign that required him to leave the task unfinished during what had been, up until that point, a very successful campaign for the Assyrians. Sennacherib would instead focus on his successful siege and victory at Lachish during the campaign. If he had taken Jerusalem and Hezekiah, it would have been logical for him to have focused on the capture of Judah's king and capital city, rather than on the capture of Lachish, which implies that he never took either Hezekiah or the city of Jerusalem. An interesting account given in the late 5th century BC by the Greek historian Herodotus mentions the reasons given to him by the Egyptians for why Sennacherib's campaign failed. This can be found in his book The Histories in Book 2, Passage 141. Herodotus writes that Sennacherib's campaign failed in Egypt after an Egyptian priest and king called Cephas desperately prayed to his patron deity Hephaestus, who was the god of fire and blacksmithing. After his army had refused to fight the encroaching Assyrians, led by Sennacherib, due to the king's earlier lack of respect for the soldier class of Egypt, Hephaestus answered the king's prayers and sent a plague of mice and gnawed away the soft parts of the Assyrians' armour and weapons during the night, leaving them defenceless. The hastily raised militia of Egypt then engaged the defenceless Assyrians, killed many of them and caused the rest to flee. Both Cephas and Egypt were saved as a result. Now even though this particular account is much later, close to three centuries later, and is quite strange when compared to the biblical record, there are some quite striking similarities that may suggest that the account that Herodotus was given in Egypt was based upon an original authentic account, which in the intervening three centuries had become garbled and highly embellished with later Greek and Egyptian elements, but which still contained a core remnant of the original accurate account. These similarities include, number one, Sennacherib and the Assyrians are the near unstoppable opponent in both accounts. Number two, the imminent disaster is only averted when both kings pray to their respective god, seeking help against the Assyrians. Number three, the two kings each receive a promise of divine intervention and deliverance from Assyria, 
even though both situations came about as a direct result of their earlier foolish choices. And number four, the Assyrian army is suddenly defeated, destroyed and forced to flee after the miracle occurs, which saves both kingdoms from destruction. Now whether Herodotus's account is based upon the biblical account or is a sheer coincidence, it is very apparent that based upon other sources that Sennacherib failed to capture Hezekiah and Judah and Jerusalem and was forced to suddenly abandon his campaign and head home to Assyria with the understanding, according to the Taylor prism, that Hezekiah would remain a vassal king under Assyria, that he would pay regular tribute and would abandon some of his lands. The divine deliverance of Hezekiah and Jerusalem from Assyria, according to 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verses 22 to 23, spread to other nations, and may have been one motivation for the Babylonians sending an embassy to Hezekiah after Sennacherib returned to Nineveh. After having returned to Assyria, Sennacherib continued to reign as king until 681 BC. He was then murdered by two of his sons, Adremelech and Sherezer, while he was worshipping his patron god, Nishrok. This event is found recorded in 2 Kings chapter 19 verse 37 and Isaiah chapter 37 verse 37 to 38. This event can also be found in the document known as the Babylonian Chronicles and in the basalt stele of Nabonidus. With the murder of Sennacherib, his son, Ezar Haddon, inherited the throne of Assyria. Hezekiah, Jerusalem and Judah had barely survived the Assyrian invasion, and they had only done so with God's help. However, the story of Hezekiah does not end there, and next time in the final instalment of our Hezekiah series, we will learn about the events, the archaeology and the history that surrounds the end of Hezekiah's reign over Judah. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. And also, please consider leaving a like and or a comment down below. Once again, thank you for watching.